Before I begin, I would like to take the opportunity to thank the Project 2049 Institute, the Japan Institute of International Affairs, and the Prospect Foundation for their hard work in making this important conference possible. I also want to thank former Assistant Secretary of State Kurt Campbell for joining us today. It has been a while since we last saw each other. I am happy to see you looking well and in good health. I very much look forward to listening to your talk later on. As I have said before, 2020 has been a challenging year for everyone, with humanity facing unprecedented hurdles caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The global economy has experienced a continuous downturn, and the way we think and live have changed forever. Critical events such as the pro-democracy movement in Hong Kong and the US presidential election, meanwhile, will significantly influence how we deal with geopolitics in our region in the future. The recent imprisonment of three young Hong Kong democracy activists serves as a stern reminder that we are once again presented with a fundamental decision to make. That is, we either defend democracy or we surrender to the threat of authoritarianism. This is also why this year's trilateral security dialogue is crucial. Only through engagement and by working together can we tackle the threats and challenges that beset our region and the world. While the COVID-19 pandemic kept us occupied, other forms of traditional and non-traditional threats also pose grave challenges. The South China Sea has become increasingly militarized and authoritarian forces consistently attempt to violate the existing rules-based order. Taiwan has been at the receiving end of such military threats on a daily basis. We therefore understand the urgency of dealing with these threats. This year, we are commemorating the fifth anniversary of GCTF, the Global Cooperation and Training Framework. GCTF is a unique platform through which Taiwan and the US have set up workshops to train officials and experts to address non-traditional security and emerging global issues. Taiwan has also established a regional humanitarian assistance and disaster relief network under the GC GCTF umbrella. So when natural disasters occur, Taiwan and its regional partners are prepared to help. This year is also the first time we organized GCTF workshops on important topics such as pandemic prevention, the circular economy, and marine debris disposal. We are actively working to expand GCTF in the near future. I am also very pleased that Japan became a full partner of GCTF last year. Sweden, Australia, and the Netherlands also joined as issue-specific partners. This year, Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs established a task force to serve as GCTF Secretariat. It also founded a GCTF alumni network to facilitate connections and reunions for former participants. I firmly believe that institutionalizing GCTF will help it become a hub for regional cooperation, particularly over non-traditional security issues that threaten countries in the Indo-Pacific. Leveraging expertise and capabilities, Taiwan and its like-minded partners in the region can effectively address the challenges ahead. Taiwan has accomplished quite a lot since the outbreak. We have done this without tarnishing what we treasure most, and that is our democratic system and way of life. I also understand that it is difficult to simply replicate a country's experience as every country has its uniqueness and faces its own challenges. But I must reiterate here that Taiwan is ready and prepared to help 
those in need. The COVID-19 pandemic allowed us to witness the fragility of life and to understand the importance of mutual assistance. There is a possibility that we might face yet another outbreak, but regardless of how daunting the future challenges are, the international community can always count on us. I wish you all a successful dialogue and a wonderful holiday season. I hope we can welcome all participants to Taiwan next year, and that of course includes you, Kurt. Thank you very much. Thank you.